All right, welcome back. The next person in this transaction is going to be the subdivider and the developer. Now, in your book or in your notes, I want you to add this word. I'm going to add the word builder, all right? Builder, so that you actually have all three names here. You've got the subdivider, the developer, and then I want you to add the word builder. Because these three people are actually talked about as a group. They are three separate functions, but often talked about together. Now, from the real estate standpoint, these people are actually unlicensed. They do not or are not required to have a real estate license. Now, there could be other licenses. I'm not saying that. I am not privy. I'm not a builder, a subdivider, or a developer. So I'm not saying that they may not have to have some kind of contractor's license or a builder's license. But from a real estate standpoint, they are unlicensed. You want to become a subdivider? Simply start saying, telling people you're a subdivider. So here's how this process works. A subdivider is nothing more than a person who's going to go out and buy 100 acres and then they will subdivide that acreage into different lots. They are subdividing the main thing. The developer is the person that's going to come in and maybe build the road, you know, and put the pond in and put the sewer system and the roads, and then the actual builder is the one that's going to build the house on that lot and then sell those to the end consumer. So these three people, subdivider, developer, and builder, are often spoke together right here, and they are not licensed as far as we are concerned. A home inspector is the next person. In 2010, this became a license required activity. Prior to 2010, if you had a flashlight and a ladder, you were a home inspector. However, now they are very licensed. And what I say that is, this is the one course and real university actually teaches home inspection um, that actually has a hands-on component. Where you're learning this license here, you will get educated in the rules and regulations, you will go take a test, but you will actually never do any work until you get hired by the brokerage, and then you will start work. In the home inspection license, they actually have to go out as part of their education and do home inspections with another licensed inspector overseeing them. So the uh, education for this is also kind of hard. Um, and a home inspection or a home inspector is a visual survey of the condition of the structures of the house. They are not a code enforcer, all right? So they look at the heating system as a whole. They may look at the structure system. They may look at the foundation. They may look at the roof. They are not going to come in and go, well, by code 2713.468B, that says, no, that's not what they do. They will suggest that you may hire an HVAC specific because they're going to go in and say, well, the system runs, but it's 29 years old. You may want to have it checked by an HVAC specialist. They may go on the roof and go, we notice there are a lot of cur curling of the <clears throat> roofing sections or there's a damage. You may want to have a roofer look at this or they're going to say, we notice there is a huge crack in the foundation. You may want to have a foundation specialist look at this. So they are mainly a visual survey of the systems of the house not code enforcement. A counselor. This is something you are going to do in your daily activities is counsel your client. 
counseling is a real estate uh, activity. You need a license for this. There are other types of counselors. There's a counselor out there that used to work for Simon, uh, the big mall, the largest mall owner in the United States. And now he has a business where you go talk to him as a broker and he will tell you, oh, you want to open a pizza store or your client wants a pizza shop. You need this zoning. You need this number of parking. You need handicap access. You need blah, 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 blah. And he will give you a list of all of the necessities by which you would use that list to then go and broker a deal for your investor client. That is a license required activities. Now you will spend a lot of time counseling your client and the better you get at counseling your client, the faster you will get to a closing. Now let's not pretend that we're not in this to make money. I ask people all the time, why are you in this? And everybody goes, well, I love real estate. I love to look at houses. That's cool. But we all know why you're really into this. You want to make money. So do not feel bad about that. And the quicker I can get to making money, that is closing a deal and getting paid, the quicker I can get to another client. So how do you do that quicker? That is through counseling. So when your client comes to you and says, well, I want to buy a big house and you go, okay. And you go out and you come back and go, well, here's a 10,000 square foot house. And they go, well, no, what I really meant was a lot of acreage because we have horses. Oh, I should ask that. So that is what you are going to do when someone says, well, I want to buy a big house. Okay. Explain to me what you mean. Do you mean a lot of square footage? Do you mean a lot of garage space? Do you mean a lot of land? Oh, well, we mean 20 acres. Okay, I need to know that. So you will counsel your client and the better you become, the quicker you can get to closing. Education is a licensed required activity. What I'm currently doing right now, I have a second license to teach this course. You have to have a real estate educator's license to teach pre-licensing courses. They need to know that you understand the entire book and all the words we had to memorize and how to present that to other potential students. If you're ever interested in the education, contact me. We are always hiring and looking for new educators. Now, there are some different requirements depending on what state you're sitting in. Uh, and I would say, the most stringent uh, requirement in not all states, but most is five years experience. All right. You will have to take a second test to be an educator. I have taken that test in several different states. I am a licensed educator in Washington and Florida and Virginia and Indiana and Illinois. So you have to do have to have a license. Okay. Then there are other people that we haven't even touched on. There are surveyors you may have to use. There are title insurance producers. There may be legal attorneys that specialize in real estate. There may be accountants that deal with real estate. There are right of way experts. There could be other people that we haven't even touched on. And this is the list of all the people that would be involved in that conveyance of real property. Okay. Now the types of property that we are going to be dealing with are very simplistic and you probably have heard of all of these. The first one being the residential property. This is the most common property that most real estate brokers deal with single family homes, doubles or duplexes, fourplexes, apartment complexes, condominiums, things like that. These are all residential. These are property that are designed and built for human occupancy. There are commercial uh, properties. Commercial properties are one where commerce takes place. Office buildings, retail, shopping centers, uh, all kinds of commercial atmospheres. Now there's one right here called a mixed use. 
I'm not a big fan of putting this in as a type of property because literally a mixed use is a building or a, some structure that actually houses two distinct other types of property. For instance, office building on top, retail on bottom. Go downtown in most any industrialized city in the United States, and this is what we use. We use some form of retail on the bottom and maybe living <coughs> apartments above it or could be office above it. Those are distinct zoning, meaning it's definitely residential one part and commercial another part. So it's really not a type of property. It's a combination of these two. All right. We talk about industrial and we break it out separately from commercial. And the easy way to remember it for me is because of the environmental issues that usually come with industrial that may not be the same issues when dealing with an office building. So factories or warehouses or industrial plants, all of those would be considered an industrial type of property. Then the most common is the agricultural or farmland and everything starts with this. If the property has never been zoned, it is typically zoned ag, all right? Then the last one we're going to deal with are these things called special purpose types. These are things that you would only see maybe one or two of in an area. That's the easy way for my little brain to remember it. Baseball parks, that's a good one. Cemeteries, public buildings like a library, um, schools. All of these things would be a special use type of property. So these are the types of property. I will tell you, we are going to spend probably 90% in the residential world and maybe bring in a little bit of the other stuff in this course because residential real estate is the most common real estate that you and I will be involved in in this conveyance.